the video popped on the internet the other day of you punting <laughs> to David Meggett and him returning it for a touchdown. Mm-hmm. Your yep. memories of that, sir. You don't. Uh, not good. That, I know you don't remember much. I don't remember. I, I remember the returns though, because there there wasn't a lot of them over my career. But the ones that were, they you know they they're not fun. Um, a lot of missed tackles, and including mine. <laughs> Uh, I had to wrap up better. I tried to use my head and my shoulder to get, you know, because David was not a very big guy. And um, him coming down the field, I figured I could just go low on him and just knock him down, but I didn't. Uh, it was wait, a good wait, kick. wait did, he, did he run you over or did he get no, around No, no, no. He just took – it was an angle. You know, the, the ball was just a little bit – it wasn't outside the numbers. It was, it was a nice kick, but I went back and I saw that play. There was like five tackles missed. And then I was, I was in the last – line of defense if you will and i was tracking him down and then i actually just went for his legs and he just sides you know kind of like stepped over and then kept going for a touchdown so what was yeah. your go-to move for trying to be the last well, line of defense it's for a good these, question these punts? so first of all i'm athletic but i'm not athletic enough to tackle in the national football league <laughs> and by the way that applies to around 99.2 percent of the population it's, it's unbelievable so what I try to do is use the sideline as my friend, right? So I try to get the guy that he's not I, – I get him to go to the sideline um, because I have – then I have a chance to narrow him down to an area where it's between me and the sideline. If I get – if I let him have a, a two-way where he can go to the sideline or he can go to the open field, I'm done because all he has to do is make one head fake. So I try to get him to run down the sideline, and then I can dive at his feet and then hopefully or push him out of bounds. Well, it's smart. You want to use the sideline as an extra defender. Because, That's right. Because That's exactly right. If you get caught in space, you're, you're toast. It's, it's one, it's one uh, little head fake, and it's just broken bones from there. And, just, and, 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 and he's not just going to score. You're going to get embarrassed, which is the last thing you want to see happen. Yeah, yeah. And, and I'll tell you, what, what really there's, there's big plays in football, and a blocked kick and a punt return – do wonders for your team and the momentum, right? And I don't remember what the score was in that game, but, you know, sometimes it, those those plays come back to haunt you in the long run, especially if they're early in the game. You know, you're always trying to make, make up for that return. Um, but, you know, it's funny because I don't know if it was with you or, or Paul. I think it might have been with Paul. We were talking about years and years ago about returners because we did a big thing on special teams, yep. and I was telling him that, you know, late in the 80s and the early 90s, kind of mid-90s around in there, there wasn't really a lot of return guys in the league. There was just a handful of them, and David was not one of them. Megan. So, and I wasn't, at that point in my career, I wasn't good enough to do whatever I wanted with the football and put it exactly where I wanted to. So, guys like that got got a, you know, a fair share of some good kicks, and they could beat the rest of the guys. Nowadays, they're all good returners. They're all, they're, in fact, they're probably a better, the returner's probably a better athlete than the 10 guys that are covering. That's for sure. Well, I mean, and, and and that's by design, right? You want, you know, you have 11 guys trying to tackle one with only 10 blockers. So there's always going to be at least one unblocked guy, which, by the way, is usually you, the punter. So you want to have your best athlete back there, right? Isn't that the point? That is the point. Yes. Um, and usually, I mean, those guys are, think about it, John. Those guys are all pretty good athletes running down there. But typically the returner is, you know, he's a special, he's a guy special to Sean Jackson, um, Devin Hester. I mean, these guys are elite athletes that can just, you know, they got moves and speed. And me being the last line of defense, my last line of defense was don't even put yourself in that situation. Kick <laughs> it out kick, of bounds. Just kick it out of bounds. Right. Not to worry about anybody tackling. So who was the guy that scared you the most? Oh, it was definitely Hester. It Def was always Hester. And, and Deshaun Jackson. Um, you know, I, I don't really like him at all. Never have. <laughs> I know you don't. Um, You've said that many times on the it's show. It's just, you know, just don't. But he's very good, very, very good. And you know, you see, you know how he's his explosiveness, you know, and he's got moves and he's able to go laterally very quickly, and and then he can turn on north south quick. And he's got that burst. Um, him, he Devin Hester was one of them. You know, back in the day, Westbrook was another guy that was really I hated to kick to. He he also scored a touchdown on me in my first year here with Fossil in '03. Um, in Meadowland Stadium, so I've had two two punt. Maybe I, I've probably had one other one in, in that stadium before. But uh, yeah, these guys are dangerous. But though Devin Hester was probably the by far the the one that I didn't want to kick the ball to. Although earlier in my career, Deion Sanders was pretty tough too. <laughs> you know. Yeah, I got to imagine. And I kicked to him at in college before when he was at Florida State. Oh, uh, makes sense. And um, you know that was prime time. 
and he used to get everybody get everybody going. Everybody going, gets hands in the air, let's go. Who time. was your what was your favorite tackle that you did make to save uh, a touchdown. Do you have one that you really remember where you're really proud of yourself afterwards? That, oh, look at me. I'm an athlete. I tackled no. him in space. <laughs> no. <laughs> Not one? Not one. They're, they're, they've all been bad. I, I, I'm a horrible tackler. It's not that I'm afraid to tackle. I'm just not good at technique. You know, because listen, I'm, I'm a big guy. I mean, I'm, I'm bigger than most of the returners. So it's not a matter of me being afraid to hit somebody or no, it's just me knowing how to hit them. So you when know, you were playing, Jeff, what were you, like 6'1", 195, 6'1", 205? Yeah, well, no, I was always, you know, probably my 6'1 one and a half is my height and anywhere from 215 up to 225. Okay. I didn't realize so, you were that high. Okay. So I, I figure, you know, I, I wasn't worried about hitting those guys, but they're coming downhill pretty quickly now. You know, they got a full head of steam coming at you. So you just the best thing to do is like the DBs do. You just got to go low and, and take out their knees or their ankles. You know, I, I, I've seen you in the cafeteria. I should have guessed you were 215 to 225 and not 205. Yeah, yeah, well, yeah we've all, we all go we, – we put on a little bit of weight as the years go on after, yeah, after think? the football. Yeah, just a little bit. Yeah, and if – this, uh, <laughs> this pandemic has not been kind to me at least because mm-hmm. I have had no time to work out like at all. Mm-hmm. So it, it, it has not been great. Uh, a couple of pieces of news, Jeff. Not that fans care about that. Um, the NFL notified teams the virtual period for the offseason work will be extended through June 26th. And officially, we kind of talked about this last week already, but there will be no in-person minicamps this month. Um, it was expected. Now it's official. Mm-hmm. Uh, clubs have the option to extend their offseason program for another two weeks or discontinue after this week, which a bunch of teams are doing. Uh, I have mm-hmm. not heard that the Giants have extended theirs. Because at some point, Jeff, you can only get so much out of these virtual meetings. You know what I mean? It's not yeah. like you can get more work done. Yeah. If you do all the installs, you do all the installs. Uh, the NFL and NFL and the NFL and NFLPA continue to work together on remaining protocols to create a safe reopening for training camp. And the other story that was out there, too, is that they're planning for four preseason games, but there are some conversations going on where you might limit that to only two this season. Yeah, it'll probably be one away and one home just to get the logistics down for, you know, because a lot of new players, not a lot of new faces and new staff. The Giants are going to have to learn how to come out of the tunnel in, in a home game and an away game. You know, everything's different. So, and, and I'm telling you, the players aren't going to, they're not going to, they're not going to um, argue with the fact two preseason games. They'll take it. <laughs> I mean. New. No. Well, and I wonder too, this will be a nice, like, you know, uh, preparation for future seasons Mm because they've talked about when they're going to lengthen the season are you going to shorten the preseason then so this might be a nice little test run to see how that works but i believe these two preseason games are going to be really really important because they are going to you know what i'm saying like there's not going to be a lot of time for the regular season to that you're normally going to have at least i don't think so you've already missed all this other stuff so I think it's critical for yeah, and evaluation. The star- and the starters, are, and well, and you need the starters to get ready too, That's, right? Yeah. So, I mean, all those snaps are going to be hugely important. Yeah, and, and, and think about this. It makes it makes each snap hugely important in practice now, oh, right? I mean, because before you might be able to say, oh, we got a month of training camp, or we got four preseason games. I'll get my chance. Well, well, well especially, <laughs> Jeff, for the Giants too, and Joe Judge has said this, like he's never seen these guys in practice before, so he's kind of learning them all in person with, with a fresh start. It's 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 really incredible when I, I feel like this has been the off season of all off seasons. It's just been so long, and if you're a coaching staff, can you imagine how frustrated you must be that you that you are going into, uh, you know, the middle of June, and you have not seen your players? <laughs> I mean, wow! Think about that. That is and, and yeah, that is great. crazy. That is crazy. And these, you know, they they've seen them through Zoom. Listen, the rookies the rookies are zooming every day. Um, the veterans, not so much. I, I think that they're on a schedule. I, I talked to Tom Quinn the other day, and Tom was telling me that the rookies have special teams meetings every single day, and the veterans are twice a week. So that's on the special team side. Whether they're doing that much or that less, I don't know on the offense and defensive sides. But but you hit the nail on the head, John. I mean, how I mean, how much more can you do um, going over and over and over? So I think that the good thing about this for the players is they have time to study. They have time to, to be at home and, 
and take this time to really learn the new playbook. Well, and it's it, but it's it's up to the players to take advantage of that too. And you know, and you know, some guys are better in structure. Some guys are fine yeah. when you're able to be on your own and kind of freelance. So uh, that's going to be on the individual player. Same thing for staying in shape, right? And we're mm-hmm. going to find out who the guys are that are conscientious. And you know, Dave Gettleman, and and I think he's done a nice job of this. Has talked a lot about getting the right type of people. Mm-hmm. in that locker room, and I think that includes guys that are self-motivated. So I would expect this group of Giants to come back and you know be in shape, be mentally ready, and be ready to go because I think they got a lot of first-class people that yeah. care and will put the time in and work hard. I think, I think this is where the whole philosophy as a head coach comes into effect when his communication with the new staff and players. You know, everybody has to get on board. And we've heard this so many times about, oh, yeah, everybody's on board. Everybody's on board with that. Um, So everybody has to buy into what Joe Judge and his staff is putting out there. And I think I think that this team wants to win. I think they're eager to get started. And I'm sure that that's probably the case with a lot of these guys is they're they're all in right now. Um, You always have your couple guys that just try to buck the system that think that they can come in and just get in shape. But in today's world. Uh, strength coaches and coaches and even players, we figure it out. We figure it out if you haven't been doing anything. 